All right, this is part two of Linear Equations Word Problems. In this video, I'm going to focus on how to write a system of equations and why we need to write a system of equations for some problems. Let's start off and say a system of equations is a set of two or more equations with the same variables. And we're going to be focusing on two, not more. We're only going to use two equations in this class. We're going to do a system of two equations. And when I say same variables, I'm going to be dealing with two variables. The number of variables is always equal to the number of equations you need in a system. If you have two variables that are unknown to us, I need two equations with both variables in order to solve that. All right, so that's what we're going to look at here. We're going to write a system of two variables and two equations. Let's take a look at the first example to understand why certain problems need to be written with a system of equations. At Happy Tails Animal Boarding, cat food and dog food is purchased weekly. Last week, Karen purchased six bags of cat food and nine bags of dog food for a total of $117. This week, she purchased four bags of cat food and seven bags of dog food for a total of $87. Assuming the prices for cat and dog food have not changed over the past two weeks, find and solve the system of equations which can be used to determine the cost of a bag of cat food, C, and the cost of a bag of a dog food, D. All right, well, first off, other... Other than this word right here, they said find and solve a system of equations. That tells us that we're using a system, but pretend that wasn't there for a moment. If I were to look at this problem, how would I know I'd be writing a system of equations and not writing an equation in slope-intercept form as you saw in the last video? Well, slope-intercept form is when you're given a rate and a starting point. I do not see a rate here nor a starting point. Instead, what I notice is that there are two clear unknowns. We do not know the cost of a bag of cat food, which is represented by C, as they tell us, and we do not know the cost of a bag of a dog food D. Given that there are two unknowns is a clear indication that we are going to be writing a system of equations with two variables. Now, they define these variables for us in the problem itself, so we don't have to define them again. But if they did not do that, we could define our unknowns using a let statement. I would say let, and I would identify my first unknown. All right? The first thing we didn't know was we didn't know what was the cost of a bag of dog food. Oh, sorry, cat food. I'll start with cat food. We did not know the cost of a bag of cat food. And I could choose to represent that with any variable I want. You could use x and y. But they chose to use C because C represents cat in this case. The other unknown is we did not know the cost of a bag of dog food. And again, we could use any variable to represent this. You could use Y to always use X and Y if you want. But they chose to use the variable D because it represents dog food so that the variables are representative of what they are actually representing. C for cat food, D for dog food. Now, that's what I want to know. And if you struggle to find what the unknowns are, just look at the question. Look at what you're trying to find. All right? It says, assuming the prices for cat food and dog food have not changed over the past two weeks, determine, all right, I'm crossing that, determine, I just took that out, the cost of a bag of cat food and the cost of a bag of dog food. Those were the two unknowns. They told us that's what we're looking for. That's typically how you can identify what the unknowns are. You're trying to find them in the problem because they're going to be our answers. All right, now, that's how we know that we're writing a system of equations. There were two clear unknowns, and we are not dealing with a rate nor a starting point. Now, given that there's two unknowns, two variables, we now need to reread the problem, and we need to find two statements of equality because if I have two variables, I need two equations. Two variables means I need two equations. So I need two statements of equality that are using these unknowns that I can write an equation with. I'm going to start reading at the beginning and we're going to work through to find those two statements. All right, at Happy Tails Animal Boarding, cat food and dog food is purchased weekly. All right, I'm crossing that out because that is just setup information. It doesn't give me a statement of equality. Last week, Karen purchased six bags of cat food and nine bags of dog food for a total of 117. That right there tells it to me. For a total of 117. For a total means equals 117. Well, what was it that equals 117? Six bags of cat food and nine bags of dog food. All right, and that gives us our first equation. 6C plus 9D equals 117. Look at the next sentence. 
This week, she purchased four bags of cat food and seven bags of dog food for a total of 87. There's another statement of equality, for a total of 87. So something equals 87, what was it? Four bags of cat food and seven bags of dog food. And that gives us our second equation, 4C plus 7D equals 87. All right, so that's writing our system. Define your unknowns, define the variables. Sometimes they're done for you, but they are the items that you do not know and you're usually looking for. Then try to identify two statements of equality that use your unknowns so that you can use those to write your two equations. I'm not gonna solve this problem here because my goal in this video is not to show you how to solve this system of equations, but rather to focus on writing it. So we are done for this problem. Let's go on and find ourselves another problem. All right, at this point of the video, I'm gonna go through 10 examples of word problems and I'm going to write a system of equations for each one. We're gonna define our variables. I would encourage you that if you need to watch another one, go ahead and watch another one. But at any point that you feel you've got this, pause the video when you get to a new problem and try to complete that one on your own and then look to see the answer. If you don't need to watch all 10 because you're getting them right, you completely got this, then you don't need to watch all 10. But there's 10 here that I'm about to show you just in case you need them. Let's start here with number one. A large pizza at, Pal at Palanzio's Pizzeria costs $6.80 plus 90 cents for each topping. The cost of a large cheese pizza at Guido's Pizza is $7.30 plus uh, 65 cents for each topping. How many toppings needed to be added to a large cheese pizza from Palazzo's Pizzeria and Guido's Pizzeria in order, to, in order for the pizzas to cost the same amount, not including tax? Big heads up that we are doing a system of equations comes in right here when you see cost the same. All right, we wanna know when they're gonna be the same cost. That's gonna tell us it's gonna be a system. All right, and we're looking at two unknowns here. All right, we do not know the number of toppings. You don't know how many toppings someone's gonna to order on their pizza. All right, and that's why we're asking here, how many toppings, and you can see that. They actually have it right here. How many toppings? That's what they're asking. Remember, the question's gonna ask your unknowns. How many toppings are needed to add to a large pizza uh, at Palanzio's Pizzeria and Guido's Pizzeria in order for the pizzas to cost? That's the other unknown. We do not know our cost here. All right, so we're gonna let Y equal the cost of pizza. Those are our two unknowns, so we can now write two equations. Now, interestingly, the two equations here model the equations that we were looking at and saw in writing a linear equation, mx plus b, because our two situations here that we're looking for, they have a starting point and a rate. Palacios Pizzeria costs 680 plus 90 cents for each topping. That is a rate. That means that if I'm gonna write the equation here, I know that Palanzio's equation, the cost is $6.80 plus 90 cents per topping. All right, I wrote it in MX plus B form. It would not be wrong to write it the other way around, and I'll show you that for the other one. Guido's, Guido's, the cost is $7.30 plus 65 cents per topping. All right. And so that's how we can write our equations here. And the order in which you write it doesn't matter. Slope intercept form does have the MX come first, our slope come first, which is why I showed that here. Uh, but in case of just writing this to solve the system of equations, it doesn't matter the order. All right, let's take a look at another one. All right, Miss Kitts works at a music store. Last week she sold six more than three times the number of CDs that she sold this week. Miss Kit sold a total of 110 CDs over the two weeks. Which system of equations can which system of equations can be used to find L, the number of CDs she sold last week, that's where they got the L from, and T, the number of CDs she sold this week, that's where she got the T from. 
They defined our variables for us already. They said that L represents the number of CDs last week and T represents the number of CDs she sold this week. So we know two unknowns, we're writing a system of equations. Now we wanna try and find the statements of equality that we can get out of there. Last week, all right, so we know we're dealing with last week, she sold six more than three times the number of CDs that she sold this week. So last week she sold, so L is six more than three times this week. All right, six more than three times this week. That's our first equation, L equals six plus three T. All right, and that's where we go for that part. The next sentence, Miss Kit sold a total, a total of 110 CDs. A total is when you add the two items. So last week plus this week, total is 110. And there's our system of equations for this problem. Let's check the next one. The length of a rectangle is equal to triple the width. Which system of equations can be used to find the dimensions of the rectangle if the perimeter is 86 centimeters? Now, dimensions is the key part here that tells us the two unknowns. We will let W equal the width of the rectangle, and we'll let L equal the length of the rectangle. All right, those are our two unknowns, and that's told to us in dimensions. Dimensions are the two sides that make up the rectangle. All right, so now, two unknowns. Let's find our statement uh, that will allow us to write our two equations. Let's start with the first sentence. The length of a rectangle is, oh, there's a key word. In fact, they even said is equal. All right, so that's our first statement of equality. Length is represented by L, so length is triple. That means three times the width, all right? And where's our other statement? It says, which system of equations can be used to find the dimensions of the rectangle, blah, 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 blah. Ah, there it is. If the perimeter is 86, well, you do need to know what perimeter is. Perimeter is twice the width plus twice the length equals 86. Another way to talk about the perimeter would be width plus length plus width plus length equals 86. You're still gonna get the same thing. These are the same equations because you have two W's and two L's. Because remember, a rectangle has two W's and two L's, two widths and two lengths as it goes all the way around the perimeter. Because the perimeter is all the way around a rectangle. All right, so that's our equation. Let's go to the next one. At a restaurant, the cost for a breakfast taco and a small glass of milk is $2.10. The cost for two tacos and two small glasses of milk is $5.15. Which pair of equations can be used to determine T, the cost of a taco, and M, the cost of a small glass of milk? Once again, they defined our two unknowns here for us, so we don't have to, uh, but we do have two unknowns. So now I need two statements of equality that use these two unknowns. I'm going back to the first sentence now that I know what I'm looking for. At a restaurant, the cost for a breakfast taco taco, tea, and a small glass of milk, M, is 210. So that's taco and milk is 210. Good, that's the first one. Next one, the cost for two tacos, all right, so the cost for two tacos and three glasses of milk is $5.15. There's our second equation, and that's our system for this problem. Next one. The frosty ice cream shop sells sundaes for $2 and banana splits for $3. On a hot summer day, the shop sold eight more sundaes than banana splits and made $156. They actually don't really give us a question here. All right, so let's identify what are our two unknowns in this case. Well, we don't know how many sundaes they're selling and we don't know how many banana splits they're selling. So let's define those two unknowns. We're gonna let B equal Banana split sold, all right? And we'll let S equal Sunday sold. All right, so I need two statements about my banana splits and my Sundays. All right, starting at the top. The Frosty Ice Cream Shop 
sells Sundays for two dollars, all right, and banana splits for three dollars, all right. On a hot summer day, the shop sold eight more Sundays than banana splits and made a hundred and fifty-six dollars. The tricky part about this one is that both statements of equality come at the very end. Here they are. The shop sold eight more Sundays than banana splits. That's one statement. Sundays is eight more than banana splits. The second is that they made $156, and we need to pair that with information given to us previously in the problem that they sell their Sundays for $2 and their banana splits for $3. That means if they sold $2 per Sunday plus $3 per banana split, they made a total of $156. This one was a little bit tricky because it was not as straightforward. All right, so you gotta pay attention to that one. I hope you got it. If not, let's try the next one anyway. Chase and Sarah went to the candy store. Chase bought five pieces of fudge and three pieces of bubble gum for a total of $5.70. Sarah bought two pieces of fudge and 10 pieces of bubble gum for a total of $3.60. Which system of equations could be used to determine the one piece of fudge F and one piece of gum G? All right, the cost of those. All right, so again, they told us two unknowns. We don't know the cost for fudge and the cost for bubble gum. All right, G, so they defined our two variables for us. I need to use those two to find statements of equality. Let's go back to the beginning. Chase and Sarah went to the candy store. That's set up information. I don't need that. Chase bought five pieces of fudge, so that would be five F, and three pieces of gum for a total. There it is, for a total. Total equals $5.70. It's my first statement of equality. Sarah bought two pieces of fudge and 10 pieces of gum for a total, there it is, for a total equals $3.60. And there's our equation, or equations. Let's try another one. All right, at College Bookstore, Carla purchased a math textbook and a novel that cost a total of $54, not including tax. If the price of a math textbook, M, up oh, there's a first unknown, M is an unknown, is $8 more than three times the price of a novel? Oh, there's our other unknown, the novel. We don't know uh, the novel there. Which system of linear equations could be used to determine the price of each book? We are looking for the price of each book. We don't know the price of the math textbook. We don't know the price of the novels. So those are our two unknowns, M and N. Let's try now to find our statements of equality, rereading the problem. At a college bookstore, Carla purchased a math textbook and a novel that cost a total. So math and novel costs a total of, there's the total of, equals $54. All right, now the price of the math book, M, is eight more than three times the price of a novel. There's our second one. The math is eight more than three times N. All right, there's our two equations. Do another one. The price E of an entertainment system at the Extreme Electronics is $220 less than twice the price U of the same system at Ultra Electronics. If the difference in prices between the system at Extreme Electronics and Ultra Electronics is $175, which system of linear equations can be used to determine the price of the system at each store? There's our unknowns, the price at each store. Now they said that E is the price uh, extreme electronics, that's why they chose E. And they said U, our second unknown, is the price at ultra electronics, U for ultra. All right, so those are our two unknowns. Let's now write an equation or two equations using them. Starting at the beginning, looking for our statement of equality. The price E of an entertainment system at extreme electronics is, oop, there it is, right there, is. E is. 220 less than, careful with the words less than. That means 220 less than taken from something. And what do we take it from? Twice the price U, all right? Twice the price at Ultra Electronics. There's our first equation. The difference, ooh, difference is the, uh, when we subtract two items, the difference in price between the systems at Extreme Electronics and Ultra Electronics is 175. Well, the difference is to subtract them, and I'm gonna subtract them in the order they gave them to me. 
the electronics minus the ultra is 175. If you did it in a different order, uh, it would uh, change whether the price is positive or negative, and at that point you could kind of figure out, oh, something's wrong there, and I need to switch that up. But I did the difference in the order that they gave me. All right, that's how I knew what order to put them in. And that's our two equations. All right, number nine. The perimeter of a rectangular wooden deck is 90 feet. The deck's length, L, is five feet less than four times its width, W. Which system of linear equations can be used to determine the dimensions in feet of the wooden deck? Well, again, we identify two unknowns, L all right, and W. Those are our two unknowns. So let's find it now. The perimeter of a, of a rectangular wooden deck is, there's our first statement of equality. Perimeter is twice W plus twice length all right, is 90. I'm not going to explain why that's the perimeter. All right, go back to a few problems to see why. Next statement. The deck's length L is, so length is, 5 feet less than. Remember, that's 5 feet less than. When it's less than, it comes at the end. 4 times its width, 4 W. There's our second equation. All right. And moving on to our last example here. All right, if you haven't tried to do one on your own yet, please pause this. Try to do it on your own first and then watch the video because you really want to test out if you can do these. All right, Marcos had 15 coins in nickels and quarters. He had three more quarters than nickels. He wrote a system of equations to represent the situation, letting x represent the number of nickels. There's our first unknown, x is nickels. And y represent the number of quarters. You could have used n for nickels and q for quarters, but they chose to use x and y here. Then he solved the system by graphing what is the solution. We're going to solve it by writing a system of equations. All right, so rereading, looking for my statements of equality. Marcos had 15 coins in nickels and quarters. There it is right there. That's what he has. So he has 15 is the nickels and quarters. That's our first equation. Next, he had, oh, there it is again, had three more quarters than nickels. Careful with this one. All right. It's three more, so you know it's going to be three plus something, all right? But what are you adding three to? Which one is more, all right? Well, really, if I rewrite this or re-say it in my head, the quarters are three more than the nickels, all right? They're three more than the nickels. The quarters are more, so I need to add three to my nickels here, and that's my two equations. Hopefully, you got it.